Good day everyone. It is nice to see you again. Welcome to our any learning as our learning community. Lesson 3. Care of clients under emergency situation. Environmental emergencies. Submersion injuries. Submersion injury results when an individual becomes hypoxic as the result of submersion in a substance, usually water. Most of the victims are children younger than 5 years of age or boys and men between ages 15 and 25. The primary risk factors for submersion injury include inability to swim, use of alcohol or drugs, trauma, seizures, hypothermia, stroke, and child neglect. Drowning is death from suffocation after submersion in water or other fluid. Near drowning is survival from a potential drowning. Immersion syndrome occurs with immersion in cold water. This leads to stimulation of the vagus nerve and potentially fatal dysrhythmias, for instance, bradycardia, cardiac arrest. Figure 3 shows the pulmonary effects of salt water and fresh water aspiration. The body attempts to compensate for hypoxia by shunting blood to the lungs. This results in increased pulmonary pressures and deteriorating respiratory status. More and more blood is shunted through the alveoli. However, the blood is not adequately oxygenated and hypoxemia worsens. This can result in cerebral injury, edema, and brain death. During assessment, you can observe the following. Ineffective breathing dyspnea, respiratory arrest, crackles, ronchi, cough with pink frothy sputum, cyanosis, tachycardia, bradycardia, dysrhythmia, hypertension, and cardiac arrest. The following are the interventions for submersion injuries. Manage and maintain airway, breathing, circulation. Assume cervical spine injury in all near drowning victims and stabilize or immobilize cervical spine. Provide 100% oxygen via non the mask or back valve mask. Anticipate need for intubation and mechanical ventilation if airway is compromised, for instance, absent gag reflex. Establish IV access with to large bore catheters for fluid resuscitation and infuse warmed fluids if appropriate. Obtain 12 lead ECG. Assess for other injuries. Remove wet clothing and cover with warm blankets. Obtain temperature and begin rewarming if needed. Obtain cervical spine and chest x-rays. Insert gastric tube and urinary catheter. Monitor airway, breathing circulation, vital signs, level of consciousness. Monitor oxygen saturation, heart rate and rhythm. Monitor temperature and maintain normothermia. Monitor for signs of acute respiratory failure. Patient teaching focuses on water safety and how to minimize the risks for drowning. Remind patients and caregivers to lock all swimming pool gates. Use life jackets on all watercrafts, including inner tubes and rafts, and learn water survival skills. For instance, swimming lessons. Emphasize the dangers of combining alcohol with swimming and other water sports. Stings and bites. Animals, spiders, snakes, and insects cause injury and even death by biting or stinging. Morbidity is a result of either direct tissue damage or lethal toxins. Tissue is lacerated, crushed, or chewed, while teeth, fangs, stingers, spines, or tentacles release toxins that have local or systemic effects. Death associated with animal bites is due to blood loss, allergic reactions, or lethal toxins. Insect stings. The Hymenoptera family includes bees, yellow jackets, hornets, wasps, and fire ants. Stings can cause mild discomfort or life-threatening anaphylaxis. Assessment include the following. Symptoms vary from stinging, burning, swelling, and itching to edema, headache, fever, syncope, malaise, nausea, vomiting, wheezing, bronchospasm, laryngeal edema, and hypertension. Interventions include the following. Treat mild reactions with elevation, 
cool compressors, antipyretic lotions, and oral antihistamines. More severe reactions require intramuscular or IV antihistamines, for instance, diphenhydramine, benefigdril, subcutaneous epinephrine, and corticosteroids. Provide patient education to always have epinephrine on hand, EP pen, and avoid exposure and become desensitized. Take note of this one. Hymenopteran stings remove the stinger using a scraping motion with a finger nail, knife, or needle. Avoid using tweezers, because they may squeeze the stinger and release more venom. Remove rings, watches, or any restrictive clothing around the sting site. Animal and human bites. Children are at greatest risk. The most significant problems associated with animal bites are infection and mechanical destruction of skin, muscle, tendons, blood vessels, and bone. The bite may cause a simple laceration, or be associated with crush injury, puncture wound, or tearing of multiple layers of tissue. Animal bites from dogs and cats are most common. Human bites also cause puncture wounds or lacerations. These carry a high risk of infection from oral bacterial flora, most commonly Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus organisms, and Hepatitis virus. Hands, fingers, ears, nose, vagina, and penis are the most common sites of human bites and are frequently a result of violence or sexual activity. The following are the interventions for bites. Initial treatment for animal and human bites includes cleaning with copious irrigation, debridement, tetanus prophylaxis, and analgesics as needed. Prophylactic antibiotics are used for animal and human bites at risk for infection. Leave puncture wounds open. Splint wounds over joints rabies post exposure prophylaxis is an essential component in management of animal bites. A neurotoxic virus found in the saliva of some mammals causes rabies. If untreated, the condition is fatal in humans. Drug alert. Rabies post-exposure prophylaxis. Administer the calculated dose of rabies immunoglobulin, RIG, via infiltration around the wound edges. Administer any remaining volume of RIG intramuscularly at a site distant from the vaccine site, for instance, gluteal site for bite wounds on the arm. Administer the human deployed cell culture rabies vaccine, HTCV, or purified chick embryo cell culture rabies vaccine, PCECV, intramuscularly in the deltoid. Snake bites. Bites by these snakes may result in envenomation, an injected poisoning. Snake bite has an effect that results in neurotoxic muscle paralysis, which may cause death through breathing failure. Other significant effects include bleeding as a result of coagulation dysfunction, muscle damage due to the release of kidney toxins, and red blood cell breakdown. Therefore, knowledge of snakes indigenous to this area is important for swift and appropriate treatment. Assessments of snake bite include the following, burning, pain, swelling, and numbness at the site. Hemorrhagic blisters may occur at the site. Entire extremity may become edematous. Four interventions. Early access to medical care in a health facility that has personnel trained and capable of diagnosing snake bite envenoming is essential. This means a health center which is equipped with the basic resources needed to provide immediate emergency treatment needs, including the administration of antivenom and other adjunct therapy. People who suspect they have been bitten by a venomous snake should be transported to a health facility without delay. Traditional medicines and other treatments such as wound incision or excision, suction, or application of black stones should be avoided. If you suspect a snake bite, immediately move away from the area where the bite occurred. If the snake is still attached to cystic or tool, to make it let go. Sea snake victims need to be moved to dry land to avoid drowning. Remove anything tight from around the bitten part of the body, for instance, rings, anklets, bracelets, as these can cause harm if swelling occurs. Keep the patient calm and at rest with the affected extremity immobilized so that the bite is at or below the level of your heart. Reassure the victim. Many snake bites are caused by non-venomous snakes. 
and even after most venomous snake bites the risk of death is not immediate. Immobilize the person completely. Splint the limb to keep it still. Use a makeshift stretcher to carry the person to a place where transport is available to take them to a health facility. Never use a tight arterial tourniquet. Avoid traditional first aid methods, herbal medicines and other unproven or unsafe forms of first aid. Transport the person to a health facility as soon as possible. Analgesics may be given for local pain, which can be severe. Vomiting may occur, so place the person on their left side in the recovery position. Close lie monitor airway and breathing, and be ready to resuscitate if necessary. Administer oxygen. Start an IV line with normal saline or lactated ringer solution. Administer antibinum and be alert to allergic reaction. Administer vasopressors in the treatment of shock. Monitor for bleeding. Administer blood products for coagulopathy. Caution. Don't cut the wound or attempt to remove the venom. Don't drink caffeine or alcohol, which could speed your body's absorption of venom. Don't try to capture the snake. Try to remember its color and shape so that you can describe it, which will help in your treatment. If you have a smartphone with you and it won't delay your getting help, take a picture of the snake from a safe distance to help with identification. Kindly click the next button for part 3. Thank you for listening. Have a good day and be safe. Agyamanak.